Welcome to Haynes History Tidbit number 21, Early Musical Bands. I'm Helen Alton, the director of the Haynes Sheldon Museum, and today we're going to take a look at some of the historical music groups in our region from the early 20th century. So sit back and enjoy. We've got some images, we've got some early newspaper stuff, early newspaper articles. Music has always been an important aspect of clinket culture. Prior to Western contact, the drum and the rattle were the only instruments in the Chilkat Valley. Early explorers wrote about the beautiful and complex harmonies they heard in clinket song. Western instruments, such as the clarinet, violin, tuba, trumpet, piano, and others, arrived after contact. The first of these, Mrs. Willard's piano, arrived on April 4, 1882, on The Favorite, and she writes about it being in her parlor. The earliest mention of formalized bands in our archives comes from a 1910 to 1911 military ledger from Fort Seward. This ledger, which is pictured as soon as I can change it, on the left, um, lists the members of the 16th Infantry Band during December 1910 to January 1911. In addition to the 16th Infantry, other musical bands at Fort Seward included the 30th Infantry Band and the 22nd Infantry Band. These three infantry bands predate Fort Seward's name change to Chilkoot Barracks in 1922. So the 16th was replaced by the 30th, and we're not quite sure when the 22nd arrives, but um, we suppose it was probably after the 30th. The next mention of the 16th Infantry Band comes from the 1912 articles of the Haynes Pioneer Press. In this year, Fort Seward military bands of the 16th and later in the year, the 30th Infantry provided musical entertainment for several public functions. The first clipping on the left, January 4th, 1912, bemoans the upcoming departure of the 16th Infantry with the article, Haynes will miss the 16th Regiment, while the clipping on the right, June 15th, 1912, discusses the musical departure of the Infantry later that year. With the band of the 16th Infantry playing on the deck of the transport Sheridan, officers and the men of the regiment waving fare farewell to the entire town of Haines, who had gathered on the government dock to bid the departing outfit Godspeed. The big ship cast loose from the wharf at 11 o'clock this morning and steamed away on her voyage west westward. As the men of the 16th waved adieu to the boys of the 30th, who had arrived to fill their places so late the places so lately occupied by them the band of the newly arrived regiment struck up a lively air and everybody burst forth into shouts and cheers the 30th infantry band was highly regarded and would go on to entertain the community of haynes during public celebrations from 1912 to 1913. These articles from June and July of 1912 detail such entertainment for the 4th of July celebration that year. On the left article, Haynes Celebration to be Hummer advertises that the festivities will culminate in a grand ball at the AB, which is the Alaska Brotherhood Hall, the music for which will be furnished by the 30th Infantry Regimental Orchestra. And note how terms for the band are interchangeable with orchestra. They both describe the same group. On the right, the paper delights in the sweet music of the 4th of July festivities. You'll notice that this article lists the 16th Infantry Band playing, and it's unlikely that they were there because they had already left. So this is probably a typo um, in the top of the article. This article also contains one of the earliest references to the Haynes Native Band, which we're going to discuss next, or shortly. This is an image of the 22nd Infantry Band at Fort Seward, and the exact date is unknown. It's likely the same band that's pictured in the next image on the 4th of July in 1921. 
This is known as the Fort Seward Band, a general connotation. It doesn't specifically state which band it is, which infantry band. But they're marching in the 1921 4th of July parade in Juneau, Alaska, coming from Haines. Now, David Light in Brothers in Harmony, the Haines, Alaska Native Brotherhood founders, wrote that when white people brought the clarinet, violin, tr piano, and trumpet, the clinket were quick to learn them. They formed their own bands and played marches, hymns, classical and popular music, even patriotic American songs. This is a photo of the Haines Native Band between 1910 and 1920, um, actually 1911 and 1920, because they were formed in 1911. Um, and this is the entire band. We do have information on who everybody is, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, the Haynes Native Band was organized sometime in 1911. Uh, this article in February 1912 states, the Native Band has shown much improvement in the short time that they have been organized. In addition to providing musical entertainment and socialization, the Native Band had strong ties to the Haines chapter of the Alaska Native Brotherhood. So this is a list of the Haines Alaska Native Brotherhood in 1916, the founding members. And we put little musical notes next to the names of those who were also in the Haines Native Band. So of the 32 founding members of the Haines A and B, 12 individuals were affiliated with the Native Band of Haines or Klukwan. Joseph Allen, who was Kaguantan, was the leader of the Wolf House, and he played trombone with the Klukwan Native Band. Thomas Andrews, Lukakadi, played drums with the Haines Native Band. James Gordon, Daklawedi, played cornet and drums for Haines Native Band and was an excellent square dance caller in addition to a philosopher of Clinkett stories and Clinkett song composer. Sam Jackson, Lukakadi, had a good singing voice and played violin in the Haines Native Band. Sam Jacobs, Daklawedi, played snare drums in the Haines Native Band. Frank Jimmy, Shangu KD, played clarinet in the Haines Native Band. Tom Johnson, Kaguantan of the Wolf House, played saxophone in the Haines Native Band. David Clonot, Kaguantan, played trombone in the Haines Native Band. George Casco, Kaguantan, played trumpet in the Haines Native Band. Steve Perrin, Lukakadi, played tuba in the Haines Native Band. John, John Marks Clonot, Lukakadi, was a member of the Haines Native Band. We're not sure what instrument he played. It's not specified in any of our archives. He had a beautiful singing voice which, quote, was heard on calm days during the Lynn Canal fishing season. And the final person is Joe Wright, who was Luca Hadi, and he was the trumpet for the Haynes Native Band and composed the Clinket National Anthem. Mr. Wright was also affiliated with the Salvation Army and the Salvation Army Band. And all of this information, uh, biographical information on the founding members comes from the book Brothers in Harmony, the Haines, Alaska Native Brotherhood Founders by David Light. And if you're interested in more information, that book is um, in our museum store, which is now online and is available for purchase. And we also have more information about the Alaska Native Brotherhood in our educational resources and June Object of the Month on our website. This photograph from 1916 is the 4th of July parade um, with the Haines Native Band. And I think, let me just double check, yep. This is the Haines Native Band playing. And our next image is also the Haines Native Band, again, uh, 1916 and probably at the same, on the same day of the 4th of July. We find that with many of our early photos, we have a lot of uh, 4th of July photos. It was a big celebration in town. This is another 1916 photo of a band coming down Main Street. It doesn't say in our um, documentation that this is the native band, but it does note that the tuba player is identified as Steve Perrin. 
And Steve Perrin um, was the tuba player for the Haynes Native Band. So we assume that this is probably the Haynes Native Band marching um, possibly in the 4th of July parade. There was also a band at Kluckwan, and we have images from the Skull al album from 1912 of the Kluckwan Native Band. And this is uh, the entire band in front of a building. And if anyone has more information on some of the individuals in these images, we would really appreciate it because we have the images, but we don't have a lot of identifiers on some of these. Um, this wedding photo, and I'm not sure who the couple is that's getting married, are, uh, was also taken in Klaquan between 1911 and 1913. And this is also from the Skull album and shows a number of band members. And our final uh, band from this era is the Salvation Army Band. And in this one, um, this is a picture from the 1920s. And its caption was, the Salvation Army, Mrs. Wright, Patsy Wright, Wright, who is probably Joe Wright, Mrs. Lee, and Mr. Lee. And Joe Wright was also in the Alaska Native Band. So there you have it, a little glimpse of the early musical history of Haynes. Thank you for listening. Um, we do have some educational materials at sheldonmuseum.org backslash special events. Uh, we do have a link to a nice website that has children's instruments that can be made, band instruments. And I'd also like to remind you that uh, we have a soft reopening going on at the museum. It's uh, for the month of June. And it's for the uh, suffrage, Alaska Suffrage Star exhibit. It's a very small exhibit, and it doesn't take long to visit. We have uh, one-hour slots, but most people have only taken 15 minutes, maybe 30 minutes at the most. Um, so if you would like to reserve your appointment, you can do it online at um, Haynes Sheldon Museum, or sheldonmuseum.org, Alaska Suffrage Star. Or just call the museum and ask for when, what times would be available on the day that you're interested. We ha haven't had a huge rush. There's been about one or two groups a day coming in to see, but we have four appointment slots per day. So I look forward to seeing you at the museum. I hope you come to see the Suffrage Star exhibit, which is social distance. Only your group of people can come in and then we sterilize the whole area. And until next week, um, I'm Helen Alton, and I hope you have a good rest of your week.